Now let's take a look at these next two buttons within our control bar. And these are for assigning keys on our computer keyboard or assigning MIDI keys, MIDI notes, etc., to control aspects of Ableton Live for us. And first we'll start with this key mapping enable button. When we turn this on, we enable key mapping mode. Now let's watch what happens. I'm simply going to click here on this clip. I'm going to type the number 1. And you can see it appear right here. 2, 3, 4. So for this one, I'm going to use a 4. And for this clip, I'm going to set its launch to respond when I type a 5. Now, once I'm through with these assignments, I'm going to turn this key map mode off. And again, I'm clicking on it. It toggles orange for active and back out of orange to normal grayish blue or whatever your look may be. So now when I type a 1, it will actually launch this clip. I can type a 4 or a 5, watching here, and spacebar to stop. So we can launch any clip we want to with any key or number from our keyboard. Now let's go back into key assignment mode and I'm going to reveal if your browser is not open, you're going to click on this triangle, and you can actually see your key mappings. So it's telling me that if I type the key 1, that it's going to launch the industrial bass tracks clip in slot 1, whatever may be there. Key 4 will launch what's in slot 4. Key 5 will launch what's in slot 5, etc. Now if this is so large you can't see well, you can resize this. So let's look at other things we can do in key mapping mode. I'm going to set these scenes over here. I'm going to type Shift 1. Clicking on this to make it active. Assign it Shift 2. Shift 3. Again, I'm clicking on the launch, the scene launch. Then typing Shift and a number to get the desired effect. Now, another one that's great to assign is the stop clips. So if I click here in this square, it becomes active. I'm simply going to use the letter S. And you'll see it appear in here as I type the S. And then we can see that over here, key S, over in the master track, it's going to activate the stop clip buttons. So we have these other ones active, but we're just adding some additional ones to it. I'm going to deactivate the key as mapping mode. Again, I can type a 1 and launch this clip. But if I type shift in 1, we'll launch this whole scene over here. Watch now as I type shift in 1. You can see it there. Shift 3 to launch the third scene. Shift 4. You can type 1 and launch just this clip. So we already see we have great variety. Now again, I'm going to launch scene 4, Shift 4. I'm going to use my S key now and watch this button illuminate. They all light up to activate. Here we go, S and all these stop buttons. See those? So it's the same as clicking here manually except for I type an S. Now some keys that most of us want to automate very quickly are the tap button. So I go into key mapping, click on that button to make it active and type a T. We can see the letter T appear here. Another one that's great is your BTA or your back to arrangement button. So I'm going to type click on this to make it active and type a B. So you can activate any of these across here or any of the other controls within here. So I'm going to come out of key mapping mode. Now I'm going to type command K and I'm going to use the key assignment for disabling that. Command K or control K. So now again when I type the T it's the same thing as clicking on the tap button. I'm going to do that now. T, 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 T and you can see it started playing back. And launch scene one, shift one. It's kind of slow, I'm gonna use my T to speed it up. T T T T T T T T T T T T So again that's tap tempo. I'm gonna type a B which could take me back to my arrangement at any point. So as you work with Ableton Live, you want to be very aware of these assignments, both in the key 
and the MIDI mapping because they're going to allow you to set up things for a template, which is your starter song. Let's look quickly at MIDI. And again, I can assign, I can click on this clip, I can play a key on my keyboard, and that tells me which note and which MIDI channel. Come out of MIDI, and then when I play that D on my MIDI keyboard, we can see it started that for us. Typing one on my computer keyboard, showing you again they can work together. But another thing that's really powerful about the MIDI assignments is if I have something that moves, I'm going to click on this fader right here and move one of my faders. And now that's set to respond to my fader. Let's come out of MIDI mode. And you can see I can change the volume. I can take a knob and change pan. We can basically do anything we want to. And additionally, when we go back to the mapping mode, we can set minimums and maximums. So if I never want the volume to go all the way down to zero, I can set it so now that when I pull my slider down, it will only go as low as 18.1 or up to a maximum of zero. Typing a 0, 0, enter, and coming out of map mode. So now when I move that same fader, coming out of that mapping mode, I can only go up to zero and come down to a minimum there. So I've controlled its range. And so you can see now with key mapping and or MIDI mapping working together, you're going to be able to get a lot done in controlling Ableton Live in a way that creates musical results.